think that the public space is a really powerful space because it represents a middle ground between our intimate domestic setting where we really understand people and feel the connection and that unfathomable concept of being part of an international community or being part of the, the human race at large. It's just sort of poetry or it's esoteric. Whereas in the public space like this, there are a lot of people that I don't know and I can start to interact with and also see myself back. So public displays of humanity is not so much about being a humanitarian, but just being human in public so we can normalize things like doing exercise, like talking to each other, being comfortable, exploring the space like we did as a child, going around and looking in corners and feeling things and really taking in our environment and being present rather than closing ourselves off and being apologetic just for being here. So the first phase of self to self is more of an internal process, just be really aware of the the energy scaffolding, the armor, the default gestures and expressions that we put on when we're in a public space because we think it's more appropriate. And that very quickly moves on to the second phase, which is self to environment. Ah, the sun starts to emerge right now, which is beautiful. And with self to environment, it's just inspecting these arbitrary human made installations, these cultural totems like the energy box, the different poles and pylons, the traffic lights, and just realizing that someone just decided to to put them there. And I'm not saying we need to go out and break all, <laughs> all laws to show that we're free, but it's also just doing subtle liberated things like maybe lying down on the ground or doing exercise or yoga or stepping back, not only rewilding, but rechilding, stepping back into that native curiosity where we might smell, touch, taste things and just really respect our environment by reconnecting with it. So here, just feeling into how you can be natural in the space, breathing, stretching, reminding yourself you don't have to be entertaining being aware of the subtleties of skin, how we might protect ourselves, how we might be aware that people are looking at us, or even just have a paranoia that we're being watched even when we're not. Softening, opening, falling in love with our place in the world, really feeling that we are part of this, and remembering. As you're stepping into open world theatre, you're really choosing to step into a state of being open. As we start to attempt our natural behaviour in public, we start to see how the context can make things seem either appropriate or inappropriate, even rude. So as we try and reveal our humanity, or at least our humanness, to other people in public, we're inviting them to do the same and we're starting a dialogue about what is normal. So stepping into self to environment. This little practical nature face which I like to indulge in. So here's a really beautiful plant and just just feeling feeling how much information we can receive through certain surfaces, like our hands and our face particularly, for me anyway. I really feel there's a lot of sensation. It's like when we make love, we kiss each other's faces, we feel each other's bodies with our hands. We can really interpret a lot of the structure, the shape, the temperature through those surfaces. This one's a little bit more prickly. Let's have a look at this. These, uh, some sort of grass we've got here. Just remembering that there's these little, these little areas. Oh, there's these little areas of nature threaded throughout the public spaces. It's almost like little, little zoos of foliage, 
beaten back by all the cement and steel but it's still here and it's still definitely oh look at this it's really beautiful this is i guess a little bit more of a normal way to play with public space there's some kind of installations here so an obvious thing would be to sit inside this shoe it's actually made for it and there's a little there's actually a little alcove in here So I'm just out here clearing a neighbor's orange tree and picking up some of the different fruit, so much have naturally fallen off and will be great to make some juice out of. But other ones, you can see over here, that are definitely past their use by date. And it's interesting the way that nature starts to evolve there's always there's never a, a pause there's always a, an evolution and looking in here there's different creatures which have now started to make this home i guess <laughs> started to take the death that is resulting and turn it into more life for them and looking at this kind of state of being a lot of people find this literally putrid <laughs> actual uh, rancid material that's rotting to be really hard to interact with and with open world theater what i'm attempting to do my is really just for myself plot out a full life a full human interaction with this experience of being here in an organic body on a live planet in outer space look at these beautiful ones um and for me Interacting with death, whether it be these kind of no longer so orange oranges, it's actually not that bad. That's an interesting thing. The way that we, um, like, if you if you allow yourself to interact with death, you don't have to lick everything. I just do it for shock value. But it's it's not that big a deal when we start to feel into our senses and eat things which are bitter that's a real big one sweet versus bitter we often feel that just look at these oranges for a second look how awesome it is to have actual food in your backyard so when we are so attuned to the processed foods we just start to expect food to take like a tastes like a, an ad you know like a billboard like this garish gaudy like i'm strawberry dee, 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 with its own little soundtrack jingle but when we get used to eating fermented foods like even kimchi sauerkraut you know um kombucha is now a lot more popular but even that is being turned into a bit of a soda but when we start to attune our taste buds to different herbs and things what was it wormwood tea i think really bitter these things can be really good for us and so it seems like a really unfair thing to have things that are good for us to be so gross and things that are tasty to be so bad for us. But I really think it's part of our, once again, programming, one part of our conditioning. And so when we train in the red orbit, which is the embodiment orbit, I really encourage people who are training with me to come face to face with different aspects of life and death to really connect with embodiment, to be willing to connect with their own bodily fluids, the urine, the feces, to be willing to also honor the life cycle. If you come across an animal that's dead on the side of the road and in a really, well, in a position that you wouldn't like to see a human in, where it's, you know, contorted, where it's being run over, where it's obviously not on it. I'm not talking about having to bury every single um, animal you see on the side of the road, but one that's really not being honored. I always like to stop and to relocate them and just have a moment where you go, amazing, thank you for being wild, thank you for your experience, and thank you now for becoming compost and nurturing the next life cycle. All right, so now we're gonna step into phase three, which is self to other. So this can definitely be a big threshold to cross when you approach strangers. And for me, it's definitely one of the bigger ones because I 
worry about intimidating people, being misinterpreted in my advances. Um, and so, yeah, regardless of how many times you do this, there can be different thresholds, different excuses not to reach out and connect with the world. So when you're in a public space, there's all different contexts. Some people are more open to interaction, like shop owners and that sort of thing. You know, they are there for people to come and, and connect with them, usually to sell their product, of course. But I feel that I like to look at the different dynamics of power at play. If I'm going to approach someone, I've kind of got the upper hand because I'm the causative factor. I'm deciding to step into their world. So this is an easy intro. If you want to start doing this sort of thing, maybe go to someone who's already open to interaction, like a store keeper or something like that. Um, if not, I then also sometimes approach groups of people so they have the upper hand as far as numbers go. And that's just a nice way to approach on a gradient before you start going one-on-one -on -one or start approaching someone, for example, you know, I'm a, a fully grown man. So if I'm to approach a child or a woman, there can be this power dynamic at play just by default. Um, and that's where I think that the authentic open world earnest sincerity, not needing to be entertaining, and just having a, a true human curiosity really comes into play because that can be disarming. Because when there's authentic presence, we often find that immediate trust in the honesty of our intention. Okay, let's start with something simple. How about I just try and get someone to give me a high five? I'll go into here, into, into hell. <laughs> Going into hell's pizza. Hello. I'm just doing a, an, a social experiment to try and connect with as many people as I okay. possible. Can, we, can, I, can yeah. I get a high five from everybody? Yeah. Are we gonna have one high fives? Two, you two? Yeah. Three, you brother. Oh, the other guy's busy making pizza. All right, how's pizza? Giving high fives, connecting people. Thanks very much. <laughs> it's really simple. I think, you know, these days we have enough of a, an understanding of social media that they probably also want their brand to look approachable and cool. Hell's Pizza is like a bit of a renegade pizza place. But there you go. First attempt and first success. Self to other, getting high fives from strangers. One of the interesting things that I find in trying to engage people is what is the in trying to engage people is what is the entrance point? What can I say within a few seconds that can have them s attain some kind of context of what we're doing? I think often when you go up to someone, due to your appearance, they might make a judgment of like, oh, you're asking for money, you're trying to pick me up, or whatever it is. Um, obviously, the context of where you are right now, I'm in the middle of a busy mob. I've got that advantage. Um, also, the equipment you're using. Right now, I've used this little microphone, so it seems a little bit more official, I think, than just using my headphones, which I was doing before. So, yeah, lots of different psychological uh, gymnastics that happen to try and orient. And I think if we're going to do these things, these open world kind of experiments, part of our role is to let people connect with the true intention even just in our presence, the way we are, our eyes, our energy. So they know, all right, cool, this person's not trying to make fun of me. They're not trying to trick me or make a fool out of me. But they're really trying to have an authentic human experience. And then I think, you know, the words can help saying things like, oh, I'm doing a social experiment. Um, the one I'm particularly using at the moment is simply saying, I'm interviewing people talking about talking to strangers. So it's really simple, an easy way in. And... It also, I think, predisposes them to saying yes because they want to be one of those people that do talk to strangers. You know, they want to prove or be the exception to the rule, uh, and so you can get a lot of yeses that way. So, I think this is a really good uh, introduction of self to other. Is just going up with something that's really easy to explain. Like, hi, I'm doing a social experiment. Just want to chat to people, and you're not trying to really shift their life too much. And that way, you'll probably get mostly yeses. Once you've done that, you can possibly step further out into trying to involve yourself in their life more. Like, you know, can I come to your work and help you? Or um, what is one thing that you really need? And try and, through your own network, get them what they need or resources. You know, you can really try and dig in and have a deep human experience. But I think at the moment, just having any kind of engagement is a win.
Hi guys, I'm just recording myself talking to strangers. Are you okay to have a brief conversation about talking to strangers? Um, no, you wrote right. No? Okay, no problem, that's true. I got a, that's my no. <laughs> it's always, it's really interesting watching people making decisions because they'll sometimes be uh, kind of balancing between their desires, probably not to talk, and their kind of social nicety of, well, you know, this guy seems like nice enough. So I'm going to keep going now and just keep trying until someone says yes. Hey, brother. I'm filming myself talking to strangers in the mall. Are you guys up for like a 30 second conversation about chatting to strangers? Uh, not really. No? Okay, Sorry. that's right, no problem. Excuse me. I'm filming myself doing a conversation with strangers, people I don't know in the mall. Could we film a brief one minute conversation? Yeah, that's okay. Hello. Uh, my name's Atlas. And um, I do social experiments where I like to see if we can find our common humanity. Yep. So talking to strangers. What's, where are you off to today? Uh, I, I stay in uh, Kelston. My, my, oh, my, my, my community you, uh, at the Kelston. Beautiful. Yep. And it's Buddhist community? Yes. Okay, yes. fantastic. What is one message uh, that you would like to give people about humanness? How, you know, our natural way of being, regardless of culture, regardless of religion. Uh, What's a message you could give? Uh, the uh, how to say, natural, nature, nature, okay. yeah. We, 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 we must to come to be, 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 be go to, we go to the be nature. Yeah. Yes. Be yeah. nature. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for your time, brother. Have a good day. Hey guys, I'm filming myself having conversations with strangers in the mall. Would you have a chat with me briefly? Yes. Yeah, cool. We got five, we got three minutes. Got three minutes? All right, cool. What are you up to today? No, nothing much. We go, we're just going back home. Okay. Uh, on on uh, 1619. 1619 bus? Yeah, right, cool. If you could tell me of one of your favorite memories in your life, your f one thing you just love to think about, what's one of your favorite memories? Go, go to Wellington on my birthday. Which birthday? The 2nd of October 1970. Oh, okay, beautiful. It's on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday, yeah, cool. Beautiful. And what happened in Wellington? Uh, we're going down on, on Christmas on my birthday. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Yeah. What I'm just filming this about humanity, how we're all the same, all human. What is one message you'd like to give people about being kind to each other or about what it's like to be human? Give them presents. Give them presents. Beautiful, man. Thanks for chatting to all me. Right. All right. Thank you. Would you guys be up for chatting to a stranger, me, on camera? Because I'm just doing a social experiment. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe. Has offered free food. So uh, my name <laughs> my name's Atlas. I do something called Open World Theatre. Nice to meet you, right? Thank you, right? Um, and I'm really all about trying to shift our mindset so we don't act like robots, basically. Oh, I'm all for that. Yeah. Every day of my life, that's what I'm trying to do. Awesome. Mate. Getting out of the the system, as they say, right? Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. What is one of the key systemized thinking? What's one of the cultural programming things you think we need to break first? Routine. You no, know, thinking that every day is based on a Monday to Friday, weekends are your breaks. Abolish that shit. Yeah. Have, give people more freedom and, I think, more and less responsibility. You know, more responsibility of their own lives and less yeah. direction. Alright, so you're vision. So, I stumbled across this guy who had travelled across country with no money. And I realised that's what I want to do. And that being living in a van with your trailer and having everything you need to be able to craft wares and based on a premise of honesty, I could ask someone what they want and what they want made out of it, sit there with them and whether that be, you know, spinning a wheel and, you know, doing your clay pottery or casting for whatever, I want them to give me the price of what they think it's worth and live off that. And oh. using, you know, vlogs, media, because I'm a writer, I write, I do a lot of writing, yeah. mainly poetry, yeah. I'd love to be able to trade and listen to people's stories along the way. That's the guy I want to get. Yeah, man. Yeah, that, that, that's the lifestyle I want to, that's how I want to break out of the system. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm doing a social experiment where I'm approaching strangers and trying to have unusual interactions. <laughs> and I strange. You're strange. Very the strangest I've seen. <laughs> and um, this is my request: is if I could give you a piggyback just up here, wherever you're going. This is an unusual experience. No thanks. No. Okay. No problem. <laughs>
What about you, sir? Could I give you a piggyback somewhere? What? Could I give you a piggyback? No, that's fine. No? no okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> Gotta keep persisting. And I'd love to be really surprised. I'd love for someone that my produce. Hello. I'm seeing if I can give someone a piggyback to a shop. Could I give you a piggyback? On my back? Walking? No? Okay. Hey brother. <laughs> I'm doing this social experiment, so I'm filming myself talking oh, to strangers. Hey. Hey, I'm Atlas. Atlas? Yeah. Nice to meet you, I'm JT. Hey JT. Hi. So I'm, I'm seeing if I can give someone a piggyback somewhere, wherever, you, wherever you're going, even just up here. Oh man, are you sure? You want to say I'm yes. I'm about to get a haircut. Great, okay. Are you cool. sure, dude? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So I'm like 80 kgs though. That'd be alright, that'd, that'd be a good challenge. Alright, okay. uh, cool. Thanks for saying yes, man. Yeah, that was good. Okay. Don't <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you did that piggyback? Oh, not since I was like a kid, dude. Uh, where's, the, where's the hairdresser? Just straight, just straight. Just go. Go, go. Oh, okay. to bring the right leg up more. Bring the right leg up more. Oh, right leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. This is going to be the highlight of most people's day. Right in the corner, man. In the corner? Right there. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Right there. <laughs> oh, thanks, yeah. Beautiful. Thanks so much for seeing us, brother. Yeah. Give him yeah. a good haircut. He's great. How much is his haircut going to be? Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Why do I'd love to pay for it for him. No, no. Yeah. That's fine, man. I'd love to. Are you sure? Yeah, you said yes, and I'll do that. <laughs> okay. I just love that moment. Um, you know, his generosity of saying yes, I really wanted to flow the yes back to him. Uh, by paying for his haircut, so yeah, let's go do that. Keep open world game going. Hello, lovely people. Hi. Hi. So I was just here before. I was like to pay for the guy's haircut. Yes. Yeah, cool. So how much is that going to be? Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, just double check. Hello. Good. Is this my friend? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> brother. There he is. Uh, I'm going to pay for your haircut in front. Is, is, so it, is it Mark? Mike? No, JT. JT. I'll make sure I pay for JT. Oh, John. Oh, John. It John. Under John. Now. Under John. Cool. Awesome, brother. Well, have a good haircut. All on me. And check out openworldtheatre.com. Openworldtheatre? Yeah, cool. <laughs> so, thanks, guys. So, John. Must be. There's only one. There's only yeah. two guys in there. One's John, one's not John. Yeah, John. Cool. Okay, well, very nice view, and it is 5310. Cool. There we go. Yay, we did it. There we had our first half of our public displays of humanity. So there's six phases in all, uh, but the first three being self to self, self to environment, and self to other and the second half involving other to self, other to environment, and other to other. But there's plenty to explore for now. I look forward to seeing your experiments and your public displays of humanity. As always, thank you so much for playing, you beautiful, brave freaks. <laughs>